sorry, morning coffee. Um, I was just going to do one second bit because I thought when I spoke yesterday there was a little bit that I probably skirted over. So planning wise, we were looking at kind of two things to do. The, the first easy thing was to look at the loans and mortgages that we could speak to the bank about and actually RBS have been great. So we've got a six month holiday now and all of the loans at work at home. Nat West have given us a six month holiday on the mortgage as well. So kind of immediate worries there have just been uh, nullified a little bit. Um, the other thing was was to look at everything in the business that we could um, trim back and bulletproof ourselves as much as we can, try and make that best um, best guess about where we're going to be over the next few months with less money coming in, but potentially trying to keep everybody's wages up. I try not to touch my face quite so much today. Um, so what, what I've got up on my computer and without giving all of our figures away, because I think my business partners might kill me for that, um, I'll maybe see if I can give Drew um, some kind of copy of our profit and loss sheet. We, we're really lucky, we've got some really good accountants that um, give us kind of monthly management accounts. They've split everything up for us as we wanted it to. Um, so as I'm looking down here, um, we've got everything in our income, so our NHS contracts, what our NHS patients usually pay, private income, super and training income, which for us is RFDs, RFDs who aren't going to finish a proper FD year now, but that's another thing to talk about. Um, then we've got all of our cost of sales, so we've got lab fees for the associates and the partners. Um, now, as we're looking at everything there, really all of our NHS income is going to stay the same, we hope. We'll wait for that big announcement. Um, obviously, the private income has come off, so we've had to take that out of our prediction. Um, cost of sales-wise, the lab fees, obviously, they've gone, so we don't think we're going to get any lab fees over the next few months. We've got medical supplies, implant materials, uh, supplies and materials. Now actually all of the implant materials are going to go. Uh, the medical supplies they often include things like my bone graft material for the implant work so that's going to go. Um, supplies and materials were really lucky that a few months ago we had to tender for my oral surgery contract so I've already looked at um, I think probably six months worth of stop bills because I had to work out what my oral surgery cost us so I knew what my chair time cost us. Um, so we've taken that six months of bill, petered it down because we're only going to be running three surgeries instead of 11 and we're going to be seeing half as many people in those surgeries I think. Um, so we've made a best estimate, we've kept that in and then we've put some kind of stock into our costs. Although we've got three practices with lots of stock. So I don't think we'll need to order anything. We'll just need to jimmy things around. Um, I wonder actually, because we have maybe 10 practices within a mile, mile and a half of us. Um, I wonder whether all of us need to consolidate stock at some point because I can imagine depending how long this goes on that we might run into kind of shipping issues. Um, then we've got medical supplies, medical waste which we're going to need but to a lesser extent I wonder if that's going to run as normal as things go on. Surgical equipment maintenance we're lucky that our chair guy is fairly local and um, you'd hope that we're not going to have massive mechanical issues because we're not going to be hammering the chairs quite so much. Um, but we've put a filtered down version of the surgical equipment maintenance costs in as well. And then 
in our other expenses, we've got advertising, which I don't think we're going to be doing any. The associate wages, which there won't be any private in there, but um, there will be the NHS fees, and we're trying to pay the associates as normally as possible. Um, the audit and accountancy fees, um, just trying to decide whether we keep things like the, these management accounts going. As, as useful as they are, they're not going to be as useful, I think, over the next few months. Although maybe for a month it would be worthwhile seeing whether our budget is working properly. Um, the bank charges, which like I say, I think we don't need to worry about quite so much. Uh, the cleaning costs, we've actually... we we're probably going to filter that down or cut it all together because we're going to have loads of nurses around to actually keep the place clean. I can't imagine there are going to be clothing costs like we'd usually replace uh, uniforms, but we are going to need to buy gowns and, as assuming they're available, uh, get some FFP3 masks, so there might be a few extra clothing costs there. Council bin collection, which hopefully will carry on. Electricity is in there, employees NI, employees pension, so that's probably going to carry on as normal because we're trying to pay the staff as normal. Um, equipment hire, sadly, things like my comb beam, which is a massive monthly cost, that's going to have to carry on. Although now I'm saying that we haven't run that finance company, so I might give them a bell today and see if we can strip that off because that's £1,200 a month. Um, then we've got the gas, which we're not going to use as much because we're not in as much. Um, we've got our business rates, gifts for staff. We'll see. I dare say they'll deserve some over the next few months. And then we've got wages, HP interest, hotels. That's going to go hygienist fees. We've spoken to our hygienists. They're the most difficult member of staff to sort out. You know, the associates have their associate contract and it has a value to it. The nurses have uh, an employed status and the hygiene and therapists were kind of looked at and said, oh, they're in a bit of a dodgy territory because for us as an NHS practice, um, they don't actually add any value to the contract, especially when we're not operating. So some of the trimming that we've done um, we're trying to keep enough money in the kitty so the four girls that we've got we can still pay them something I'm not sure that's going to be full wage to be honest but um, I think they're just going to appreciate getting something because I'm hearing a lot of hygienists and therapists have been the first people to go I, I actually understand that but I feel really bad for them because it's, it's going to be a big cut in their wage um, where am I up to? hygienist fees the insurances are going to have to carry on. There's loads of debate on the um, WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups about insurance. Where with Towergate, we've spoken to our um, broker, um, and he's he's hoping that our wording in our policy is good enough that we may get some comeback from our insurance. But I'm not not that hopeful because I think from seeing everybody else, it's um, it's almost been a blanket, you know, the insurance that insurers aren't going to pay. We'll have to see what happens with that one. Um, we're going to have to carry on paying the insurance because it's got the other things like the partner's life insurance and our indemnity costs in there. Um, we've got the IT services, which I think we'll need um, because we're still going to try and run it and if the computers go down, that's going to be a nightmare. Our IT guys are local guys that I've known for years, another small business that we need to try and keep going if we can. Um, management charges, uh, rent and things like that at one of our premises, there's a management charge there, that will need to carry on. I can't imagine there's going to be a lot of postage packaging and stationery. Um, I don't think we'll have big professional fees, if any. We won't have any recruitment expenses, the rent is going to remain the same. Although one of our premises is rented from the local NHS, uh, Earl Valley, there might be a conversation to have there to say, listen, we need some help over the next few months, because that would be another couple of thousand pounds uh, a month that we'd save. Um, then we've got other bits of repair and maintenance. 
Um, I want to say one thing, which is in in this um, next part, we've got software support. Um, where with SOE, we do a lot of our ordering through Henry Schein. Henry Schein were great yesterday when we called them. They helped us out with a few maths and also they're, they're trying to work something out for us cost-wise for our SOE support and all of the add-ons, which, which actually I would never expect from them. Um, so that's been one added little bonus, which hopefully is going to bring some cost down. Um, do a few miscellaneous bits and bobs, uh, the water rates which will still be there, we won't have any travelling, we won't have any travel expenses, we won't have any training costs, thankfully we're signed up to Tubial so everybody's going to have lots to do for the next few weeks, um, we'll still have the telephones running, um, we'll still have some sundries, um, substance, <laughs> subsistence, sorry, um, no I don't think that's going to stay in there. Um, subscriptions will probably stay in there to some extent. Staff entertainment, I think we'll wait for when we come out the other side of this. It is about the time that we usually have the UDA night out, but um, that might have to be a end of coronavirus night out. Um, so really with all of this, we, we've sat down, we've trimmed out everything that we can We've looked at all the money that we think will still be coming in, and that's really what we've based our budget on for the next few months. Um, now we've spoken to the banks and we know that we can take some of that out. It's actually, it's given us the best estimate, I think, of what we'll be like uh, for however how long we need to run a partial service, or even if we need to shut together. If we if we shut all together, um, as partners are probably going to take a little bit of a hit because there's no way that we can maintain anything like our normal wage, which is why we're looking at our mortgages and loans and things like that. Um, so I, th I think from a from a kind of what to do today point of view, I think pick up the phone to the bank. Um, I had this conversation with a friend at the road um, who's worrying about his state. I feel really sorry for him because he's a pra practice owner on his own, reasonably big practice, but 50-50. And I, th I think obviously he's worried about the 50% private, which he's going to lose. So for, for him, phoning at the bank, consolidate a few debts, speak to the bank about how long they can defer any payments for. And just keep that extra few thousand pounds in your pocket if you can. Um, if you don't have management accounts like ours, and I mean, like I say, I'll see if I can get some kind of copy of this to, to Drew, so you can just put your numbers in. Um, the, the other way, and it's going to be more laborious, is just to go through all your bank accounts, go through your old lab bills so you can take them off, go through your supply bills and your pay slips, and then you've just got to input all of the data in and work everything out from there. Um, I think that's probably all that I need to say. I'm going to go back to my coffee. I hope everybody has a, a slightly better day today. Okay, bye.